Welcome everybody, it's Christ169, aka Mark, aka Mark, coming to you live with the power of phone from cricket, YouTube, and a great place that God created on earth. Uh, I'm here, you're there, let's get into it now. This is episode, season one, episode, episode two of the Days of Our Bioware. Um, Whenever the drama, cause y'all know soap opera, you know, in days of our lives, I just ch changed it, you know, days of our Bioware, uh, you know, days of our anthem, days of our, uh, now, a person named John or Josh, uh, as an editor, uh, came out a couple days ago with a scathing report of the way that the Bioware employees have lived with with practically with with um, depression, anxiety, you name it. Uh, they've lived with this for many years. Come to find out that Bioware, mo about half of them didn't even know what Anthem was until they saw it on 2017 E3 presentation. A lot of them didn't know. Uh, many people have left. I know Jason came in, person now who uh, who got to, uh, who rallied the troops, and you know, and defeated the uh, you know dissension in the ranks. Um, Bioware, I think it was, uh, Winnipeg, somewhere in Canada. Didn't really think of what Jason's Bioware was, you know, the B team, A team, kind of thing where they felt like you know they are better than them. Now, you don't dare tell them what to do. They'll tell you what to do because they're A team and they're B team. And they screwed up for five years on this and gave it to the B team, called Jason's team. And they had to fix it within 12 to 18 months. 14 to 18. 14 to 16 months. <clears throat> maybe, a little, maybe two years. 24 months, maybe. I'd say it's 24 months. And all that's happening. Why we, the gamers, are thinking, when we saw the, the, the presentation of, of Anthem, a lot of people didn't know how bad it was. For the longest time, folks, Anthem, you know, wasn't even a game. It wasn't even, it was, it was still on hard copy on drawings. Yet. It, it, it was no physical game. This is what I'm reading from it. Now, I didn't read the whole thing. I didn't read hard at all. But I got, I got from this from um, Angry Joe Show, Chris from Music USA, and Boogie Two Two Boogie Two 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 Nine Eight Eight. Um, I and I, I give those the gentlemen their props. Uh, I watched their videos. Uh, 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 thought about it, wondering how can this happen? And living in the age where games are being you know, mass produced every year, like Call of Duty, you know, um, not really Halo. Battlefield, Battlefront, FIFA, Madden. These games come out every year. These are every year titles. AAA titles that come out every single year. That are produced to the masses. Because we, consumers, want the game now. So I kind of blame what, no, a little bit on us for pushing EA. Who, frankly, the, this, this reporter or viewer, this, this, um, this, Author or writer kind of gave EA a blank, you no, know, a blank pass on this because uh, they weren't the ones really pushing this. Uh, they let Bioware of Canada take care of it. Bioware itself, Bioware. The Bioware, Bioware, one Bioware of Canada was closed down, but a lot of your frostbite engineers were put on FIFA to make that work, but not put on Anthem. Because Anthem was a whole new game from the ground up. It wasn't like taking Battlefront and putting Battlefield on it and there you go, there's your game. Or taking <laughs> some types of other games that are out there. I don't know for sure. I'm going to say Halo and putting Call of Duty in Halo. Making it Call of Halo. But you could do that because it's for running shooters. The Frostbite engine was not made for FIFA or Madden or it was made mostly for first person shooters like uh, Titanfall takes uh, the Frostbite engine pretty well because it's, it's, it's a first person shooter Battlefield, Battlefront, these games take it because it's, it's round, it's, it's, it's designed for them 
It's not designed for games like Anthem that are open world, in quotations, open world, and be more than just, you know, what it is. It's supposed to be more than just some cookie cutter game. And they didn't even know that the game was looter shooter. Uh, you couldn't even say the name Destiny because they wouldn't allow it. The higher ups at EA or, or Bioware or both said you can't use the word Destiny. Um, of course, the game was supposed to be called Beyond, but Beyond was trademarked already, so they called it Anthem. Don't know why. Beyond sounds a lot better, but then again, or Beyond Anthem, or Anthem Beyond, or just plain. A blank name. Who cares? You know. But that's the thing that drives a lot of people mad. Gamers include. Because the gamers, we smelled something was wrong. Angry Joe, you take USA, even games like people like that, even Boogie, thought something was wrong. They, you know, they noted it, you know, a year or so ago. This game was supposedly in production or, or on paper in 2012, but wasn't reported in production until 2015, 2016. It wasn't being finished in 2017, 2018. For a March 2019 release date. That being said, they spent five, six years pilling around with this name and this game, not knowing what it is. And the, uh, I think the executive, executive, I think, of EA or Bauer came in, so he didn't like it. And they had changed it, put the flying back in all he you know, you know, he went away his words don't and you know, F ten loved it. And so they had an idea, they fly around. But that was it. They had anything else to do. And for for weeks on end they didn't do anything but you know, going into discussion, discussion the game, turned into a gigantic no no brawl for all, like a you know, like a Royal Rumble or like, like a battle royal. Or when nothing gets done. People taking off people having stress attacks, almost heart attacks. Being told by doctors to, to take off weeks and months, it may, it may be in a year, and so, so some of them, a few of them, you know, didn't even come back to work. You know, a lot of the executive level people, people who are really there, left to form another company with, with one of the producers that left. Now I'm kind of spitballing. I don't, I don't have all the names and charge and graphs to tell you all this stuff, but it proves the point why how, how Anthem was so terrible. It makes sense to me that Anthem is crappy, as crappy as it is, was even crappier being developed. Because the game wasn't even have developed, developed for only a year. 14, it's 24 months. The game, before that, the game sat in people's minds on drawing on paper. This is how crazy it is, guys. And if you're going into a game design degree, I don't say don't do it. But I say be very careful what, what company you choose to go into. A, a company like Bioware, you know, all around. A lot of companies treat their people like damn freaking slaves. They smack them around, they beat them around, they show them the town, and, and they, they, they step on them. You know, and they don't care about what you think or what I think. Because they're there to make money. And FIFA... And Madden and Battlefield and Battle and Battlefront are, are are microtransaction games. Anthem was supposed to be just like Battlefront 2. But the game was supposedly in, in you know in development at that time. And they saw the firestorm they got from that, so they all had to take all the stuff out. There's missions that were taken out taken out. In games are only supposed to happen at certain times. Timed in games where you couldn't just beat it. Games being throttled being purposely thrall so you can't earn loot as fast to make me pull that credit card so I'm swiping it. So I always say, you know, consoles should come out next year with, uh, with card readers. Chip or swipers. Or both, anyway. Because, you know, that's all what it is. It's one gigantic freaking microtransaction. You know, and microtransactions. And Anthem is no different from any other game like Battlefront Battlefield. But Battlefield, and you had games like, uh, uh, not Days Gone, but, uh, I can't remember what it was called, um, it was an RPG that's supposed to fail, but really well. I can't remember, I can't remember, I never played it, so I don't know what it is. But, the point being, though, uh, when that game s succeeded, and Mass Effect Andromeda fell, Bioware does not have a heck of a whole lot of chances left. 
And the anthem is going to fall in the toilet. Anthem is dead, folks. Anthem is gone. There's no saving Anthem. Anthem is it's out of here. And, and, and with this report, with this scathing report from former, mostly former Bioware leaders and workers, it just, you know, it just torpedoed the whole case of Anthem. Anthem is dead in the water and it's drowning. It's probably going to sink faster than, than, than Titanic did. Because there's, there's no way this game can come back. Not unless they do something spectacular. They get, like offer free loot crates or whatever you call them and offer free stuff and make it rain make it rain free. It ain't going to happen though. Because I don't know. No, no. EO counts losses. Fire Bioware. Close it down. Or, or, no, no, or develop it completely. Buy them out. Suck them in completely. Dissolve the company and just not worry about it anymore. And, that, and that's what Bioware will probably end up being being done to them. They'll be uh, they'll be crucified. No pun intended to anything. Crucifixion. Uh, they'll be uh, uh, they'll be murdered off. Go ahead and say that. Sorry, Lord. Uh, they'll be murdered off, and probably half of you will be fired. Half of you will be put into. into Different divisions, and there you go. And there's your Bioware, and there's your, and your new team of people working on other games now. Because you can't have this. Anthem was a game doomed by day one. When your own development team don't even know what the game, what game you're creating, and they find out on on the seven uh, on 2017 going 2018 season. On E3, no, oh wow, I was wondering, I'm going to make a looter shooter then. No, and they didn't know uh, what you're making. That tells you something's wrong. Something's wrong, something's, you know, there's trouble in paradise. Because there's no way you can, you, can, you can sit here and tell me or tell anybody in this world uh, with a straight face, without laughing, <laughs> without, uh, with a straight face, tell people with a straight face, without laughing, that they are that dumb. But this report came out and said it. That this guy, this person, uh, the journalist who did the article said, a lot of them didn't even know until almost the 11th hour what the game was. They thought it was some kind of, some kind of clone of maybe Halo mixed with uh, Destiny, or mostly Destiny clone. But we couldn't say it was that Destiny. It probably is a Destiny clone if you think about it. It's just a third person, poorly done Destiny. Destiny 1 had more levels than this does. And that's saying so I played Destiny for a month, I got tired of it. I returned it. I got tired of it. So this had, this Destiny 1, first Destiny has more by itself, bare bone by itself, than Anthem ever had fully in the first 30 days. And that proves my point that EA is losing their minds. EA has lost control of themselves. They have literally been bitten by some kind of weird bug and they lost all total bodily functions. Because now you have practically frostbite being used in games that shouldn't be used in games. EA wants to uh, um, put, put frostbite in there. They don't, you know, the ruined, the scatter bug was supposed to be a different game. And it was. I know a bigger open world, we can fly when we want to. You know, hundreds of thousands of enemies to fight, you know, or allegedly. It'd be more like a uh, scavenger quest game. More like Monster Hunter World, but not as cool with the monsters. Be like, a, you, you run around, you track things, you hunt things down. Not, not, not really hunting, but you find things. Make sure of uh, Tomb Raider meets Uncharted meets Destiny in a weird way. And that's not, you no, know, that's my word on it. That's not... This John or Josh guy who 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 did the article. That's my how how I'm looking at it. But they didn't do anything for over, over, over five years with this game. In the last 24, 18, 16 months, they finally had to cram everything together. They spit out this thing. They now did that before a couple games passed, but uh, I think they think before Mass Effect Andromeda, or right after right after Mass Effect. I can't I can't remember the bloody game. To my head, but it's not coming out of my mouth. Um, and, I, and if I want to find out what it is, I'll do an update video and update that on this. 
But, um, but yeah, it's, it's just a gigantic mess. You know, no one knows what's going on. The left hand and the right hand's doing. Both brain, both eyes are... I don't know what left hand or hand do. I don't think the brain even knew what they were doing. I don't think EA even cared really, because EA like <laughs> Bauer just struck out with Mass Effect Andromeda. And then one more time, we're gonna you know probably gonna buy him out or shut him down. No, I think they own him anyway. No, I don't think Bauer owes him anything. EA, I think EA owns Bauer anyway, so they can just fire all of them, shut him down, and say heck with it. You know, that's being truthful, guys. That's not being... That's not being, uh, you know, facetious. That's being very, very truthful. Because now you have a game company that's probably going to have its head cut off and be killed because of its own inferiority failures to understand what it should have done. Now you have a game company going to probably lose all of people's jobs, probably. Maybe a little people's job. The higher up will probably kiss butt and get them to keep their job, get developed some jobs. Maybe lower end job, but still be still having feels still, still be employed. But the, but the law uh, 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 the underlings will probably be you know you go away. Yeah, you go on over there. You get unemployment for a while. You know, and they'll be thrown away like. Like pieces of garbage, you know. And of course, EA can. Bauer came out with this his letter saying, oh, "We appreciate all of our team. Everybody's team built the game together." It's PR crap. It's saying that we don't know what's going on in our own, uh, our own company. We're gonna make up some stupid little thing here. Here you go. Here's our, here's our PR report. That's all. You know, that's all what it was. It was anything other than. We're stupid. We don't know what we're going. Half the team didn't know uh, what we were creating until E3 2017. The stress is like Hulkamania. Stress and depression and anxiety like Hulkamania was running wild. Okay, it ran wild in that company. And people who go, I'm, I'll make games, make tons of money. You're going to be a subservient person. And you understand that when you get a job like this in gaming. You're going to be a subservient person. Monkey. So when a company makes a big game, tells hundred millions of copies, you better get ready to work eighty hours a week. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying have this notion that that the era of making a game like Halo One, Two, and Three are over with. That polished and good, you're gonna be stamping and stamping and throwing around, throwing, freaking out, throwing stuff in there, cramming it in the box and punching it and sending it out to sell it. And you have time to go, ah, enjoy the game. You're, you're going to be stamping and zapping and doing a little pen work and typing. On you. You're, you're going to be doing three jobs at one time. Well, this guy is talking about how, how these people were literally doing multiple jobs to do this one game. And half of them and the support staff of, of, of Frostbite were put on FIFA and maybe even Madden because that's more because that's the cash cows. Anthem was left out like, me, it's not important. But yet, but EA wanted Anthem out there. For six years, Phil, for six years. And I really can't compare it to Crackdown 3. Because Crackdown 3 is different. Yes, it's a game that's kind of crappy, but at least it works. It does what it does. I play it. I haven't beat it yet. The review is coming. And right now, my review will probably be better of Crackdown than Anthem. Because Crackdown 3, yes, it's garbage and it's silly. But it don't take itself very seriously. Anthem's supposed to be this, this math effect type of game where you run out there and kill everything and you are the god of your thing. Crackdown 3, you're an agent working for an agency. Pretty bland. But this is decent enough to play. I heard Anthem so bad that a lot of people don't even play it. Anthem, the Anthem, ooh and ah, wore off. Crackdown 3 is a free game you can get on, on, on Game Pass. And play it for a couple of hours and then, eh, whatever. And don't worry about it anymore. That is what, and that's what happens when you release games like both of those games. But the Crackdown 3 is somewhat playable and you can enjoy it. There's stuff to do. In Anthem, it's just 
nothing I've heard to do. Once you beat all this stuff in an end game, you're pretty much done with it. Cry down three, yes, you can run around, throw stuff around, and, and be all superhuman and be a godlike creature. But at least, at least, at least you do something. So I understand what people are saying when they come trying to compare Crackdown down three to, to Anthem, but hey, both games were out for almost for almost a decade being developed, five, six, seven years. It's a long time, folks, for the game to be out. That's during the beginning of the Xbox One and, and PS Four base model life starting cycles. They started getting up, started getting traction, especially on the PS Four side. But it was still a a breath of fresh air for both consoles to have new games coming out, but they never did until about oh, about seven, eight years later, about five, five plus years later. So uh, this ends this episode of Days of Our Bioware, um, episode two. I only do episode three when it comes down to it. I don't see. Hopefully, no more need for the episodes. Days of our uh, Steelers, or didn't see but Days of our, sorry, Steelers, Days of our Ravens, Days of our whatever like that. I can I can go hours on my team Ravens all day long, but Days of our Bioware, Days of our Anthem, Days of EA. I might do you know a video part three, you know, a Days of our EA Electronic Arts, just to just cap off this season here, the two part season. And end it. Uh, then I might do a days of our you know year review, a review of all stories. But right now, it's just really sad to see a company like EA and a company like Bioware that once was good be drugged through the mud by their own stupidity. You can't blame all on EA. You can't blame all on Bioware. Goes right down the middle. Leadership, in, in, in my, in my expert opinion, leadership both sides sucked. Cause they didn't come together as one. They allowed an A team, a Toronto, Canada, what do you want to call it, Bioware, to be the A team, and Jason's Bioware to be B team. They didn't have showmanship. When they said something, the A team team like, oh, we're A team. We'll listen to you. And they get make a mess and give it to the B team. Oh my God, we got to fix it now. Kind of what happened with the reporter and the journalist kind of said on this whole thing. So my review is, EA and Bioware are both in, in knowing the crapper right now, but Bioware has a lot more on their face than EA does. You know, EA is just a publisher that just gives them money sometimes to do stuff. Now they don't get a lot of money. Compared to the other better ones like the Maddens and the <clears throat> FIFAs, because those are actually games people actually buy, uh, tons of, cultured edition, you know everything. I mean they'll buy everything and they'll buy it in the time. So and and they can microtransaction you know it out the rear end. You can't microtransaction. You can't microtransaction Anthem if people ain't buying it. So. I think EA is cutting their losses with this and letting it. This is why they're very quiet about it. They're very quiet. They're letting it go. They're letting Bioware take all the crap and they're just walking, go, <whistles> walking away. Because they know a turd hit the fan. The, when the report came out, they knew about it. And, you know, maybe they didn't care. Or whatever it is. But guys, that's my video. Like, subscribe, turn notification down below. You know, and ring that bell. So, you know, when my videos come available to watch. Yeah, I just can't believe, you know, Anthem was that much of a cluster. Massive, I know, a mess. I knew it was terrible. I heard rumors about it before it came out. You know, rumors were going, but... You know, not like this. Not like this at all, but... I guess any game job, any job you have stress when you're making products, <laughs> making million dollar game, a hundred million dollar games when, you, when your last game sells pretty decently. And this game doesn't sell as well. A lot of stress. People don't know what the game is and until they find out in 2017, E3, so. Yeah, but I pray for, I pray the Lord to bless all the people in the uh, EA and Anthem that <laughs> this crap gets worked out and they come back together as one again because you know, EA used to make some good games. 
they were once number one and it's fell down hitting down. Then they come to dump they fell off the wall and shattered everywhere. But unlike the story, they didn't get put back together again. They have multiple times. I mean, I mean a lot more tape, a lot more glue on them. But they have been put back together again. So hopefully time will tell. But I think Bioware from days are numbered. Well, with this, it was a report coming out. It came out, you know, and their little PR stuff they did. Yeah, it might be time for those higher ups to look for something else to do. And the guys who are working now, the underlings, might want to pull the rip for the bell out. Unless you want to work for FIFA or work for Madden, maybe. You know, then by all means, stay there. But I heard they don't get paid a whole lot and they do a lot of work. But that's game design for you. You won't, you won't make a lot of cash until you get up there to the high levels anyway. But yeah, guys, like I said, like, subscribe, comment below if I'm wrong. I guarantee you, you can make sure you'll, you'll pound the keyboard tell me I'm wrong somewhere. Um, I know, know, know any feedback is good about the game, about you think. My, my question to you guys is, what do you think about Bioware itself and EA? Do you think that they, the EA should just take Bioware, crumb up the other ground like they did with, like they did with the one of the can, uh, uh, Canada's type of Bioware sent? Blah. Do you, should, should, should you guys think they should uh, dissolve Bioware like they did in Canada? And if, and if you do, um, do you think that EA should try to fix, maybe open a new studio with new people, maybe find new Bioware people to open the studio with, and resurrect that? And if not, whatever. But I appreciate you guys' time. I'm going to go work out.